Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is August 23rd, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. Here you can see some thunderstorm activity across the higher terrain of British Columbia. You can see the storm track well over the Pacific, moving well north of our area. We're going to build a ridge and warm up quite a bit here across Pacific Northwest, potentially flirting with 90 degrees here in Seattle. But you can see this upper level low across our area here, bringing this wraparound moisture. It's going to bring some thunderstorms possible down to the Cascades, Northeast Washington over the next three days, including today. We'll take a look at that coming up here and you can see on the visible satellite imagery these low clouds moved in a little bit further than some of the models forecast here so it might be another hour or two before this starts to burn off through the morning here but some places were pretty socked in across Whidbey, straight to Fuca, Washington Coast, South Puget Sound but eventually that'll burn off uh, during the day today and we'll be nice and warm this afternoon but you can kind of see this wraparound moisture with the upper level low across the region now looking at Seattle yesterday, 81 degrees, 4 degrees above average. We could challenge a daily record high on the 24th or the 25th of 88 and 91. We're probably going to be close. I don't know if we're going to quite get there. The models say about 90 on Thursday and just close to that 88, maybe 87 on Wednesday. So it'll be close. Something to watch there for Seattle. Those records set back in 1982 and 2016. Looking at Portland yesterday, 88, 91 the day before. Average temperature starts to tail off a bit at this time of year. But Portland is going to be above 90 at least two more days coming up this week. Now checking out Tri-Cities broke their... Um, 100 degree streak there, six straight days, 100 plus, 98. They're, but they're going to be flirting with 100 degrees out there for the next few days. We go through this week too. Probably, de uh, it'll probably determine just how close that upper level low is, and that that'll determine what kind of temperatures we get out of that forecast here. But upper 90s look likely at this time. Here's Spokane talking about thunderstorms today, tomorrow, and Thursday. The main locations shaded in blue here. Thunderstorm impacts. Some of these showers could drop some pretty heavy rain up to a half an inch just over a few hours so you got to watch out for urban flooding mudslides lightning and that locally heavy rain and hail especially in any burn scar areas out there now taking a look here at the european this just kind of shows this precipitation six hour total series see eastern british columbia north washington go through wednesday afternoon see that precip kick up again across washington and bc and thursday the upper level low still in the area there you can see it all the way through the higher terrain of bc cascades eastern washington idaho and western montana as well before it finally starts to move out a bit but still including eastern british columbia there even on friday afternoon and western montana now, taking a look here, this is the HER3KM. This is just uh, the 12Z run here. This goes out 48 hours. It is not picking up that lightning activity across BC this morning. But as we go through this afternoon, you see that upper level low spinning there. And as we go through Wednesday afternoon, again, with the upper level low around the area then, could produce some of that flooding and dangerous lightning out there. Now, checking out the NAM3KM simulated infrared satellite imagery here. And as we go through the three days, you guys can kind of see this. I'll speed it through that again there. Upper level low, wraparound moisture. Here's that upper level low spinning here for Wednesday afternoon. Going into Thursday, it's going to still be hanging out in this area. So we could get some multiple rounds of convection here through BC, eastern Washington, Idaho, Panhandle, and western Montana. Some strong thunderstorms even possible towards Montana. Now checking this out, this is the extended forecast. What can we expect? There's the European currently. You can see the upper level low kind of right here the next few days, but the ridge over the area for general warmth. You can see the trough wall out of the Gulf of Alaska here. As we go through, you can see a trough kind of coming down the backside a bit through the weekend. And then this trough is precariously close here. This ridge is still here, but we have to really pay attention to just how close this trough is going to be. It's going to be making big differences for just how much we warm up across Pacific Northwest through the end of August and into September. Because as you can see, early September, the deterministic European here yesterday afternoon has this trough actually starting to dive through the area. And now we'll take a look at the ensemble. This is a average of all 50 European ensemble members here. There's that upper level low in our ridge bringing the heat this week. And you can see this trough digs out here, but it stays a little bit further west, which would keep us, you know, warmer here compared to the deterministic European run. So that's something to watch here the next few days. And we'll take a look at why this is so hard to predict here in a moment. So stick with me here. Even though, now look, the ensembles do have this trough kicking through early September. So we may not end up uh, that much above average here through early September. That is, this is something we got to watch here. Now, taking a look here, this is Typhoon Tokage. And you're like, oh, why do I care about a typhoon that's way out in the middle 
of the Western Pacific towards Japan. But as you can see, this thing is moving northwards. It's going to get eventually absorbed into the westerlies and start to play havoc in our ridges and troughs downstream from it. And so that it, this actually has a big play in where the ridge and trough position will set up. And that brings differences to whether we get heat or if we're much cooler. Now taking a look here, mid-level water vapor loop. There's Japan, here's the Pacific Ocean. You can see tokage right here. Eventually gonna get caught up in the westerlies here and then we're gonna amplify a ridge and a trough and this is gonna have a big play in that because you're injecting tropical moisture. That's a lot of energy into our system here. It makes it more unpredictable. Now taking a look here, Pacific Ocean, Japan, Hawaii, there's Washington, Oregon, California, British Columbia. Look at this big trough currently, our big ridge bringing some heat. There's our upper level low spinning around the inland northwest. Now you can see tokage get caught up in the westerlies here, move over the top of the ridge. It's got a lot of energy with it, and it's probably gonna help amplify this trough here. So that's why some of the models have been saying we're gonna remain warm through the end of the period here, but we're just not quite sure how warm. The GFS is further west here. This is the GFS, just hot off the press, 12Z. Further west with this troughing here is tokage rounds that ridge and comes in and amplifies this trough here and builds this ridging. So we do have disagreement between the European and the GFS and the placement of the ridge here and through the extended. In fact, let's update that. We're on hour 156. How much more do we have now? There we go. So let's see. That's where we left off, 156. Kind of has this trough moving close, but you can still see we've got above average heights. But then it does show that trough kicking through on the GFS also. So there's some agreement there between the GFS and the European there through early September. Maybe we won't re keep that heat going as the upper level low moves through. I mean, we're getting pretty far out there now. This is over 10 days out on the GFS run. So can't put much stock in it there, but maybe another ridge builds behind that at that point. Now, taking a look here, this is precipitable water. If you take a look here, here's Japan, there's Alaska, Pacific Ocean, Hawaii, there's Washington, Oregon, British Columbia. There's tokage here. You can plainly see it on the precipitable water, and you can see that energy break brought over the top of that ridge and come across here and dig out into that trough. So I'll play that again. There's tokage here. You can see the moisture move across the top of that ridge. It moves down and back into the base of this trough here. And that's going to be a big player in our weather here coming up through later in August. And this is kind of something that replays itself many times during our winter months. We get energy from old decaying tropical systems here that enter the westerlies. And they can play havoc with our ridge and trough position down here. And that also ties into like the Madden-Julian oscillation and El Nino conditions or La Nino or and so conditions, whatever you want to call it. As we go into the future, we'll explain that a little bit more here too. We'll talk about the Madden-Julian oscillation and we'll look at La Nina and what we can expect here also as we get further towards the season. But this this energy that gets injected downstream as a, is a big player here for weather in the Pacific Northwest. And sometimes our biggest windstorms come from these old decaying tropical systems out here. We call them typhoons in the Western Pacific. So when those get caught up in the westerlies, sometimes we get really big storms like the Columbia Day, st day storm was an old decaying tropical system out here that flew across Pacific and rounded a trough and just blasted the Pacific Northwest. And that's how a lot of our big windstorms occur. Now looking at the Tri-Cities, what can you expect this week up towards the upper 90s as you can see. Then the cool down with that trough potentially through the weekend, then maybe another warm up and then another trough. But this will probably change here as we're getting pretty far out in the forecast. And you can see we had some uncertainty still in the models. Seattle, Tacoma, Thursday, 90 degrees possible there. That's the day. If we get that, would be 12th day this year of 90 plus for SeaTac. That would set the all-time record set back in 2015. And you can see we might be right around 88. That's the record high there for Wednesday. Day. The record high for Thursday is 91. We could still get there possibly as well. Portland, you can see one, two more days of 90, but it's going to be pretty warm today as you get probably upper 80s as well. Now, six to 10 day temperature outlook. This was issued yesterday, Pacific Northwest. Not much has changed. Six to 10 day below which is kind of interesting. I guess this is just after that upper level low kicks out. So in the wake of that below average temperature, our, our precipitation is expected across Pacific Northwest for the most part. Eight to 14 t a day temperature outlook, still calling for above average. And again, the precipitation you can see there. Look at Texas getting some good uh, beneficial moisture here through the extended, hopefully. Now taking a look here, this is a... Uh, La Nina, the ENSO conditions here. We are at about negative 
1.2. So we are into moderate La Nina territory now. And you can kind of see we're going to be down into La Nina territory here. Let's zoom in on this. This is August, September, October here. So this is for September, October, November, December, January. We should still be in La Nina conditions by January, probably by February, even here before we start to be or start to crawl out back towards neutral conditions here. And then April, May. But the thing is, the atmosphere doesn't always play along with these readings as well. The atmosphere is probably going to take some time to adjust to this. You know, we're, if we're in La Nina conditions here, it can take a long time to come out of those uh, relative conditions here in the atmosphere. Uh, so, yeah, that was we're going to talk a lot more about La Nina. I don't want to get into it too much. We're a little bit too early in the season and we'll start to compare data and what we can expect this coming winter. And at the at best, a forecast when you're talking about La Nina and months out in the future, you're just talking about subtle possible probabilities at that point. So, you know, you ca you can kind of say, well, we might have a little bit. We might have a below average winter coming up, but what does that mean? You know, that doesn't mean the entire winter is going to be cold and it can be just for certain periods. And as we saw last year, we went through a very cold period in December. And then we, you know, we went through kind of a low there through uh, what was it? February and March, I believe it was, if I'm remembering correctly, then we went back into a cooler spring. So you got to take that stuff with a grain of salt as we <laughs> go through the extended forecast. You don't want to be hanging your hat on, you know, months out La Nina forecasting. But yeah, anyway, enjoy these thunderstorms out there. If you guys are out there, watch out for that flooding, though. This upper level low is going to be spinning for the next few days. This ridge will be building, though, and continuing to keep areas outside of these thunderstorms here pretty warm. Seattle might get another 90-degree day here this year coming up. And then we will continue to watch that troughing and ridging downstream and see if we're going to be dealing with some below average temperatures moves and troughing in the region here and finally start to put an end to the summer warmth or if we're going to continue to build the heat through the extended so yeah anyway um thanks for watching you guys uh, click like and subscribe and it looks like i can link my store to the channel now so i'm going to link the merchandise store should be linked to the youtube page coming up in the next couple of days it's not done yet but I will be working on that in the next couple of days also. So anyway, we'll do this again tomorrow and I'll talk to you guys then.